In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to identify the three rigid transformations. If you're following along in your notes, you can write this topic down in the table of contents with the appropriate page number. Now, hopefully you already previewed the other video that I posted as the prerequisite for this lesson. But by the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the three rigid motions in transformational geometry when given a visual example. So the three vocabulary words that you need to be using in today's lesson are translation, reflection, and rotation. I have a couple of descriptions to the right there to help you understand how these transformations move. Right, so they each move in their own unique way. So I know I have some descriptor words like shift or slide or flip or turn, but today I want you using your grade level vocabulary, not the descriptive words. All right, let's get started. A rigid transformation changes the position of a figure, but preserves its shape and size. So I've underlined that word preserves because that's important. You need to understand what it means to preserve. And sometimes you might be able to understand uh, a new vocabulary word by something you already have um, in your brain, like preservatives, right? That kind of sounds the same as preserves or uh, raspberry preserves or strawberry preserves, right? That's like a jelly. Uh, so a preservative is something that is added to food uh, that keeps it the same, right? So it doesn't go bad and it doesn't get moldy on us. So to preserve means to keep the same. So a rigid transformation keeps the shape exactly the same, but it changes its position or its location on a coordinate grid. All right, so a rigid transformation changes the position of a figure, but it doesn't change its shape and size. And when something stays the same shape or size, we often use this word down here, congruent. So if I translate a triangle, or I rotate a triangle, or I reflect a triangle, guess what? It's still a triangle. All right, and if it's an equilateral triangle when we begin, it will be an equilateral triangle when we end. If it's an isosceles triangle with two sides of 10 inches, it will be an isosceles triangle with two sides of 10 inches. So these three motions today are gonna keep all the side lengths the same, all of the angle measures the same, all of the areas the same, all of the perimeters the same. It just might be pointing in a different direction or higher up or lower down or shifted in some way. All right, so again, you're gonna be using these three vocabulary words today to describe your rigid transformation, right? Your distance preserving transformation. Okay, here's a visual image for you of the three types of rigid motions. So we have our rotation, which is a turning or a twisting. We have our reflection, which is a flipping, right? A mirror image. And we have our translation, which is a sliding, right? which is a sliding of the shape. So I wanna point out to you here that this image in particular has lines drawn from the original light colored shape to the new image, which is this darker colored shape. So let me trace it for you here in blue right? There's my pre-image, right? Or my original figure. And then as I slide it, I get my new image, right? My new image. So I have my pre-image or my figure here, and then I have my new image. And that is a slide. Now it looks like it's sliding diagonally. See that? But there's no such translation as a diagonal translation. You can say that I shifted up and right, but you cannot say that you shifted diagonally. Right? The same is true with this second image here, this triangle. Right? See this point out here pointing to the left of the screen? Now when I trace over here, the corresponding part is now over on the right side of the screen. And it's kind of hard to tell when the figure's not labeled. So when we're working today with our coordinate grids, I'm going to label these shapes for you, right? I'm going to label these vertices. 
A, B, and C. And I want you to notice that when I label the new image, I'm going to use the same letters. But when I use the exact same letters, it's hard to tell which one is the first image and which one is the second image. So when we name our new image, we use these little tick marks. Okay? Now, technically, they're ticks, but we pronounce it A prime. A prime. B prime. Right, so the mathematics is that it's a little tick mark, but you pronounce it A prime. Right, so my original shape is A, B, C, and my new shape is A prime, B prime, C prime. And we write it like this. A, B, C maps into A prime, B prime, C prime. Now, I kind of obnoxiously wrote those a little bit big. Here should be a little more petite. Something similar to that. Okay? All right, and the last one here is the rotation. Now, this one happens to be counterclockwise. That means going against the numbers of the clock, right? So if you're looking at an analog clock, this would be going with the numbers. That's clockwise. This is going against the numbers, so that's counterclockwise. So this is a twist or a turn. And I can see that if I label this A, and I label this A prime, that they're clearly nowhere near where the original was. This one's pointing on the right, this one's kind of up and to the left, and it's very different looking. Now sometimes it's really hard for kids to tell if it is a translation or if it is a rotation. So since that's hard, let me give you a little hint here. When you have a pre-image, right, the original figure, and a new shape, what you can do is you can draw these lines, just like we have here, from the original vertex to the new vertex. And if you have a translation, your lines will all be parallel to each other, and they will all be the same length. They are all going to be the same length. Let's see if I can ungroup these. Now, I kind of sketch it, so it's not going to be perfect. But you see how they're overlapping? They're all the same length. And that's kind of how you can tell. Now watch as I do the same with the rotation. A to A prime. B to B prime. C to C prime. All right. A little wacky looking, but you can see they're all going in different directions. They're not parallel. Sometimes they're crossing over each other. And that's a telltale sign that you have a rotation. So I want you to keep that trick in the back of your mind, okay? All right, let's pause this video and see what you think about these three. All right. Letter A is a reflection, right? It flipped from up to down. Number two is a rotation. And number three is a translation. All right, so do you think you're kind of getting the hang of it now? All right, let's try some a little more funky looking. So in these figures, we have this dot here, right? One of these dots in the shape. And I put these dots here to kind of really help you see where it originally started and then where it finally finishes. So I want you to pause this video and give these six a try. Let's see how you do. All right, you ready to check your answers? What do you think? Hopefully you did okay. That should be giving you a really good idea of what these three rigid motions are. All right, one more check for you, okay? I'm going to give you some more examples to visualize, just like we just did. And I want you to remember to follow the position of the dot, right? That movement of that dot will really help you to decipher whether it's a translation, a reflection, or a rotation. And that's the vocabulary I want you to use. So why don't you get some scrap paper ready? Why don't you number it from 1 to 8? And to really make sure you've got a good handle on this, each of the questions will have three parts. So number 1 will have three answers, 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, 2C, okay? So let me show you what I mean. So number your paper from 1 to 8. Let's take a look at the first four. Pause the video now. All right, let's take a look at your answers. 
pause the video, check your responses. Okay, let's move on to numbers five through eight. All right, hopefully you paused the video, completed five through eight. Now let's check your answers. All right, sometimes I have a couple of kids that ask me about question number seven. Sometimes they have different answers than me for letters A and C, and they're actually not wrong. So let's talk about number seven here. I'm gonna slide up a, a larger image, right? So number seven, my original image looks like this. And then when I look at A, they certainly aren't pointing the same way. And I'm gonna take my image and I'm gonna rotate it. You see what happened there? So you could say that this is a rotation, you could. And I think that's because for us, this figure has a lot of repeating shapes here, right? One box sticking out, one box sticking out. And so when you rotate it, it does in fact look exactly the same, right? Another thing you could try is to reflect this or flip it. Okay, I'm gonna flip it to the right, flip it to the right, and there we go. It looks exactly the same, right? So if you have um, a repeat answer for number seven, or you had two rotations, or you had two reflections, you are correct. All right. Now let's take a look at your actual grade level questions. I'm gonna be presenting you with a coordinate grid with an original figure and its new image. Remember original figures. Are labeled with um, capital letters at each vertex and then their new image are labeled with the prime signs. All right, so what do you think about number one? Did you guess translation? Remember, if you're not sure, then take your finger, draw a line from corresponding part to corresponding part. If they're all parallel and they're all the same size, it's a translation. All right, how about number two? Now you can clearly see that letter P is over here on the right and letter P prime is over here on the left. So it definitely cannot be a translation. So it has to either be reflection or rotation. And for us, when I draw my lines from corresponding part to corresponding part, right, when they're all parallel like this, that is a reflection. If it was a rotation, your lines would be going in different directions, maybe even crossing over each other like that. All right, how about this one? Again, if you're not sure, try the corresponding line test. Okay. So X, oops. X and X prime. P and P prime, Y and Y prime. That is a translation. All right, the first thing I want you to notice is that H is at the top of the figure and now H is at the bottom of the figure. See that? So they're in different directions. So it's definitely not a translation. Translation preserves the actual direction of it it's just the reflection in the rotation that can shift it around or um, flip it. So when I connect my corresponding parts, U to U, F to F, I get that signature crossover. That is a rotation. All right, give number five a try. Try and visualize with your corresponding parts. T to T prime, H to H prime, Y to Y prime. See that? That's the giveaway. When you have those crossing lines, you definitely have a rotation. And then when we think about it here, we can see that 
H is twisting over, right? Y is twisting over. I went the wrong way. H to H prime. Y to Y prime. All right, just a few more here. Hopefully you saw it. Translation. Corresponding lines all parallel and congruent. All right, be careful with this one. The most common wrong answer is translation. But that's not right. I know because when I trace my corresponding parts, R to R prime, E to E prime, Q to Q prime, N to N prime, you see I get that classic crossover. That's a rotation. So I really want you to use that technique of connecting your corresponding parts to really kind of help you to decide whether it's a reflection, a translation, or a rotation. This one is a translation. All right, last one. What do you think? Corresponding parts. Corresponding parts. I have a crossover already. That's a rotation. All right, you saw these three. Let's see if you can name them real quick. Catch that? Rotation, reflection, translation. All right, that concludes our lesson on the three rigid motions.